All right, guys, uh, we're going to be doing some heavy hitters today. We got some amazing patterns with the 835. Uh, yesterday it was. Check that out. Big white three and a half inch shots. We fired these at uh, up to 100 yards. Now, the 100 yard shot, we, we did get 11 of 18 pellets on target. It was with single on 18 pellet single out load. And, um, well, at 100 yards, you know, it, like I said, we got 11 pellets, but it covered the entire patterning board which was uh not small by any means it was a widespread um we're using blue dot yeah this is all the blue dot powder i have but i'm grateful for what i got thanks zach um also using long shot of course this is my favorite magnum powder yep blue dot long shot today um loads were a range of i believe number one buck all the way up to uh quad buck Let's, uh, let's get the loading one up, shall we? Okay, now, a lot of these loads have already been done, and they are, they are tested, well tested, by, um, Wade Rush and Roger Adkins. Uh, a lot of good, good loads here. But, I just wanted to test these out of my 35 uh, just to see what they would do out of that gun with the setup I have. It has a GT, Kicks GT 680, 680 Constriction Choke. Um, again, it's an 835. Let's start with this one here, shall we? It's got pretty simple load, 37 grains of blue dot, the MG42 wad, which is right here, from Ballistic Products, or you can get it from Precision Reloading, I think. Um, 18 pellets of 31 cal, number one buck, and mixed number 47 buffer. Pretty simple little load here. Now, this was a brand new prime Shaddai hull, so we're going back with a Shaddai primer. I already have all the hulls resized because resizing three and a half inch hulls on the Lee Load All is a little bit time consuming. You need two resize rings or a piece of PVC pipe. Four fifths inch diameter and about inch and a half tall. And then you need to uh, set your resize ring right here, get a Phillips head screwdriver, use the press to uh, press it out. Pretty simple. Or you can knock it out with a mallet and by hand. But anyway. Going back with the Shadot Primer. 37 grains of Blue Dot. Get my scale set to grains. The range segment will be included at the end of this video, guys. And uh, at 50 yards, we got patterns that uh, probably a lot of people would consider way too tight for buckshot. We were getting quite literally patterns the size of our fists we could cover them with our hand spilled a little bit but that's okay probably could have uh fired the crimp mouth out a little bit 34 37 double check it 37 the few little flecks that i spilled out i'll I'll get those back up. Uh, I, I just cleaned off my reloading bench here. So I can just scrape it back in my hand when I'm done here and just toss it back in the in the bottle. Um, MG42 wad. This is what that looks like in case you don't know. These hold an ounce and a half in a two and three quarter inch shell. Or 14 pellets of double lot. 16 pellets of single lot. Can't use my press. I don't have it set up for three and a half. Oh, in case you don't know, you can drill a third hole with the bottom of these wad guides for the Lee Load All. Um, maybe you can see it in the video. Yeah, it's right here. You can take it off and drill a third hole in the very bottom of it, and that will work with three and a half inch shells. Um, what was in this load again? 18 pellets of single lot. Powder coated. Let me get my... There you go. Powder coated. 31 caliber single lot buck. Stacked by twos. There's six, ten, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. I believe that was eighteen. It was definitely just sixteen. Fourteen. Okay, now we have it. 18 pellets. 
Mix number 47 buffer. And this load right here would be probably 90% of people's go-to load for deer hunting within, I want to say 60 yards, because at 50 yards it still did amazing. But it had a slightly, slightly wider spread than the uh, TPS wads did. You guys will see that at the end of this video, just how tight those TPS loads were. Um, both of us were completely blown away. It, it rivaled my 10 gauge, maybe even outdid it. That should be good with the buffer. This one had a six point crimp, so of course we're going back with a six point crimp. Nice. It's just like that. Has a little bit of a pinhole. Uh, I have started putting the clear fingernail polish on all of my, I have it right here, on all of my um, crimped loads just because, why not? No reason to let any buffer leak out. Let me see here. I did have one or two flakes leak out, so yeah. You can go to the dollar store and get this stuff really, really cheap. Uh, Wade Rush, he uses Miracle Nail, which costs like a dollar at the Dollar General, I believe, is where he gets it. And uh, he's been using it for years and works great on it for him. Well, there's the first one. Awesome performer. Oops. Um, the next one is going to be... I'll save the roll crimp ones for last. Oh, uh, I did use the curling iron trick on these right here. You guys know when you fire roll, uh, roll crimp shells, it's all wonky looking, a little bit distorted looking. I take a uh, tapered curling iron, heat it up, stick the hull over it, and uh, unplug the curling iron, run it over some cold water with the hull still on it, and the hull holds its shape, looks just about brand new again. You can even do it with once fired 16 gauge shells, you can see. There are There is no crimp memory left in that. And if there is, like, it's almost non-existent. But this one's prime with the Federal 209A. I repolished the brass, cleaned up the hull. This is a, essentially a brand new prime 16 gauge hull. And that is something you can do with the uh, the curling iron trick, as we call it in the uh, reloading group. The next one's going to be 29 grains of long shot. MG 42 watt again. 16 pellets of 33 cal double watt mix number 47 buffer. So, once again... All these loads I'm loading have Shadot primers. You could also use Winchester or um, just whatever you have, really. The Blue Dot ones may benefit from loading a, uh, using a Magnum primer, I should say. CCI 209 ohm, Pioki Magnum primers, or uh, Federal 209A. Let's see, 29 grains of long shot. Twenty three. Twenty nine. Okay, um this one used the MG forty two wad. Got another one right here. These wads are cheap. Uh it's fourteen ninety nine for two hundred fifty wads. I did just order a bunch more from Ballistic Products along with more TPS wads, CB1138, um, just a lot of wads I didn't currently have currently have, or I'm running low on. I ordered a bunch more. This is a double lot load. Dropped another one. They're not stacking by two. Hold on. There we go. Three. Board. The bottom of the MG42 wad has uh, little ridges in there, and you have to put the first two pellets between the two ridges and the, and the uh, second two on top of them. There's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Sixteen pellets. We count this again. The stack hot looks a little bit low in there. There's four, five, six, seven, eight, 
John 10, oh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, stack height comes a little up a little bit low in that one, so we're going to use, I might have had it in the low to begin with and just not remembered to write it down, um, an overshot card. That's okay. Mix number 47 buffer. Speaking of buffer, I did also order some of the uh, ITX, BSB ITX buffer from Ballistic Products. It's the one in the green can. Just to try that one out because I've not seen anyone else use it. And I've been curious about it for a long time, so it's going to try that one out. I know the original buffer works great. Mix number 47 is what I prefer, but maybe the BSB buffer will work even better than both of these for buckshot loads. Let me get an uh, overshot card here or something I can use as one. This is a piece of a 16 gauge waxed hard card. I'm just gonna split it in half and use it. Actually, I'm gonna need both the halves. At least. I'm pretty sure I put a bingo chip in this when I first loaded it. Or I may have put a gas seal underneath the wad. It crimped good. This one won't need any. Let me focus on it for you. It, it, this one was not going to need any of the clear fingernail polish, but I'm going to use it anyway. Okay, guys. This wad slitter here was made by Gary Kasky. Um, if you want one, go to facebook.com slash buck and slug reloaders and uh, search his name on there after you get approved and get in contact with him and he will make you these wad slitters. Now they're four, of course, unslit wads. This one's in 16 gauge. This is, I believe, the first one he has made in 16 gauge. You guys can see how it works here. It's got four blades on it and it is adjustable. I'll show you here. Watch the top of it. You turn the bottom of it right here. See this right here? You turn it. And you can control the depth of the cut. Let me just go ahead and show you. See how that's much deeper into it now? The higher, the higher you go with this, or the lower in this case, since I have it upside down, but yeah, uh, the more shallow it'll cut the wad pedals. This cuts, a, obviously, a four pedal, um, but you can cut it half cut all the way uh, half cut down three quarter of the way you can cut it all the way to the bottom of the wad whatever your preference is um the load right here no it wasn't this one it was i don't know where i put the hole right here this one was using a three quarter cut on the wad four pedal three quarter cut and we got probably the best pattern we've ever gotten with the 835 with that load but i'll show you how this one works again if you want to Pick one of these up yourself. Go to facebook.com slash buck and, buck and slug reloaders and look up uh, Gary Kasky after you get approved. And uh, he'll hook you up with one of these. Big fan of it. Uh, this one is, like I said, for 16 gauge, but it also will cut uh, 12 gauge wads too. Uh, Alright, now I'll be the first to admit I don't have the most steady of hand here. Uh, Especially when, like right now, when I have a bunch of caffeine in my system. A uh, little bit shaky right now, so let's just see how good we can get it. I cut a few of these earlier and loaded some shells earlier, and uh, it did one heck of a job. See how this works? You just insert the, uh, the wad cutter, and it guides itself. All you do is push down on it. I have this one set to do a three-quarter cut. Hold on, you guys can't see it so well. I can adjust my lighting a little bit. Focus on it. Look at that. That is so much easier and a lot handier and faster than cutting these wads by hand. And it does a much better job. Three quarter cut is my preferred cut for the uh, TPS wads. Four pedal, three quarter cut which is what this is. Um, again, if you guys want to get one of these wad cutters for yourself, he makes them in 12 gauge and uh, I believe 20, 16, 
And uh, when I was talking to him, he was working on one for 10 gauge. Uh, obviously, I've got to get one of those for myself. The wads I have for 10 gauge are uh, unslit, BPD-10 and uh, TPS. But let's get the loading that haul up, shall we? Again, Shadot primer. Cut my fingernails off and it's hard to pull the primers out of the box right now, but that's okay. This one was using 29 grains of long shot. Guys, if you're loading long shot in three and a half inch with two, with two ounce loads, go with 29 grains of long shot. It, it, you can't beat it. As you'll see at the end of this video, video, you cannot beat the 29 grain charge. We were getting, like I said earlier, stupid type patterns with it. 29 grains. Perfect. TPS wad, three quarter cut, four petals. This one is using a uh, eighth inch fiber cushion wad. That's a little bit less than an eighth. We'll make it work. Guys, just cram that in. It You don't have to cut it, trim it to perfect size. Just cram it in. And then use your press to uh, see it. I like that. See how good that looks in there? Um, if you don't want to do what I just did, just buy 20 gauge or 28 gauge fiber cushion wads. It works all the same. Um, this one had, looks like 18 pellets of 29 cal. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yep. Comes exactly. Hope I can show you this. I'm going to try my best, but right up to the top of the crimp. Mix number 47 buffer. I believe this was the final load I fired, we fired, on film yesterday, and uh, yeah, the pattern was just, I couldn't believe it, 50 yards. A little bit more buffer. That's good. Not a bad looking crimp at all. I am going to apply some uh, clear fingernail polish again. But guys, these white three and a half inch to dot hauls are just, they're really cool. They're really cool looking and they reload great. Uh, the, I have some green Shadot hauls, uh, three and a half inch, as well as some Fiocchi's and they reload, well, I believe I've reloaded one five or six times, no issues. Shadot hauls are tough and no matter what gauge, Except the 10. I wouldn't recommend buying the 10 gauge ones. But there's that load. Huge fan of that one. Alright, what do you say we load some uh, quad buck? Now, this load right here for a conventionally loaded shell uh, had one heck of a pattern. It's about what I would call perfect. With the uh, larger pellets like this, triple wide and quad buck, I, would, I couldn't ask for a better pattern than what this did. Again, conventionally loaded. Now the TPS loads were way, way tighter than this, but this still patterned awesome at 50 yards. A great hunting load if you like the big pellets. Um, again, should I primer? This one had 29 grains of long shot. But if you wanted it, if you wanted to, this is a two and a quarter ounce load, 12 pellets of quad buck. You could take it down to 27 grains and maybe tighten it up a little bit, but I like it just the way it was, to be honest. I wouldn't want, want it any tighter. Twenty nine grains. The Lee two, the Lee two point two CC dipper, 
fill it full to the top with a long shot, and it drops a perfect 29 grains. This one needs the X12X gas seal. One second. Forgot to grab one. Here it is. They are symmetrical. You can load it either way. Does not matter which way you load it into the hole. They're hard to get in. You just gotta kinda fiddle with it until it goes in, right? There we go, I got it. You should press to see it. Make sure it's all the way down, rattle your hole a little bit. Quarter inch fiber cushion wood. I hope that was a five, uh, quarter inch. Um, I've got a bunch of ripped off pieces up there from other loads I've, uh, you know, tore the fiber cushion wads in half, quarter, eighth, in, you know, and uh, just a bunch of scraps up there. That looked like it was about a quarter inch to me. These stacked by two. They're 38 caliber. I've seen where that one went, so I just picked it up. It's four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm gonna need a little bit more fiber cushion. That's okay. I dropped another one. Where did it go? Right here. It's okay. I got a lot more fiber cushion laying over here. We'll add probably another eight, eighth inch section of it. This looks like it'll do the job. Probably compressed it too much. Again, 12 pellets. There's eight. 10 and 12. That's looking a lot better. Um, I am going to get, however, an overshot card for it because these pellets are huge. Oh, that's looking like that'll work. Um, mix number 47 buffer. good and I'm putting an overshot card on here again this is just a really thin layer of fiber cushion wood normally I use paper towel but I have that laying around Tavik works great for overshot cards when you don't have much room left in the hole they are I believe 0.05 thousandth I had some of those but not anymore a bit more. Good looking crimp. There you go. And that's for the people who like the big quad buck pellets. We got a little bit of wrinkle right here, but that's okay. Uh, these thin wall holes with the uh, big pellets like this, conventionally loaded, it sometimes you get the hole wrinkled, but if you just let them sit a little while, they'll correct themselves for the most part. So no issues there. Big fan of this load. Okay, these next four holes have already got reprimed, or they're using the Shadot primers because that's what came in these holes. They were brand new primed. But if you have other, you know, standard power primers like your Winchester 209s, CCIs, Rios, Fiocchis, uh, all that stuff will work here if you don't have the Shadots, but I imagine most of you do. Um, for the Blue Dot loads, uh, you may benefit from using a uh, Magnum primer, 209A, 209A ohm. Fiocchi Magnum, all that good stuff. I haven't seen Remington primers in a long time. Are they even still putting those out? I have no idea. But anyway, this one's got 29 grades of long shot, TPS, wad, four pedal, three quarter cut, eighth inch fiber cushion wad, and 18 pellets of single lot buck buffer. All right. Where did I put my long shot? Oh, 
awesome. 29 grains. E, where'd I put it? Right here. TPS wad. We're going to slit it again with Gary's wad slitter. This thing's really cool, guys. Huge fan of it. I have it set to do three quarter cuts on TPS wads for 12 gauge. Awesome cut on this. Let me my camera to fo focus on it. There you go. Awesome cut. Three quarter of the way down. And that is what I prefer. Um, there it is. I was looking for the hole, couldn't find it. It was right in front of me. Eighth inch fiber cushion wide. Let me get another one from over here. Just gonna grab a huge piece, why not? See if I have something I can actually just use as a ramrod here. That looks like it'll work. Nope, too big. The TPS wad's a little bit too big for the press, or uh, too small in diameter. That'll work. Awesome. Just like that. 18 pellets of single watt buck is what this one had it. Stack by twos. Stack by twos. Come on. There we go. Three, four. Five, six. Seven, eight, nine. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. And eighteen. Awesome. Actually, I need a little bit, a little bit more compression with that wad. Use the press. Hope it comes back off. If it don't, then you guys get to watch me struggle. Awesome. You guys get to watch me struggle here. I knew that would happen. I don't know why I did it. At least it's compressed now. It's not down on the powder. What's going on here? I did it. I'm right. Again, 18 pellets, stack by two. Now normally, I would have just cut the camera and restarted that, but I'm just gonna leave it. All right, that looks a little bit better. Gives me a little bit more room for a roll crimp. I think I may have put in a quarter inch of a fiber wad, not an eighth an inch that time, but that's okay. That may have been the issue right from the start. Touch more. That's gonna do it. Now, what I use for an overshot card is just a uh, three quarter inch bingo chip flat bingo chip uh someone in the group the other day posted um that he received bingo chip chips with a uh point on them i think but that one's ready to roll crimp let me set my roll crimper up one second forest camping 12 gauge roll crimp tool from amazon or ebay ebay they're uh, under 20 dollars shipped when they're in stock um they are made in russia if anyone cares about that uh, just got a little bit of oil on it. You can use Vaseline, whatever you got as a lubricant. Just gonna send this. I'm not gonna let it get heat uh, hot or anything. I'm just gonna send it. It was literally just that quick, that easy. That's why I like this roll crimp tool so much. There's that one. Sorry about the lighting. I know. But let's move on to the next one. 
34 grains of long shot. Actually, uh, tell you what, I'm not gonna load this one here because, uh, two reasons. One being the 835 doesn't lock the 34 grain charge of long shot, which this would this had in it. It's 34 grains of long shot. Uh, maybe you guys can still see the ring on the brass, right here. Maybe. Anyways, the gun doesn't lock the 34 grain charge of long shot or the 31 grain charge. Uh, it swells the brass out in a weird way. The primer, the firing pin punch on the primer goes back into the uh, firing pin hole and it's hard to kick it out of the gun. You'll see Josh in the video have to rack the gun against the ground to get the hole to come out. The 31 grain charge had the same thing happen to us but we had to beat it out with a stick from the muzzle end. Had to remove the choke, get a stick that fit to the bore, and actually beat it out of the uh, out of the gun. Um, not good. Other guns may handle the 34 grain charge just fine, but the 835 has known what people call the Mossberg marks. So I just uh, loaded the shell and realized my phone had stopped recording. Uh, no idea why I did that, but it was only two or three minutes. So. Uh, Again, the second reason being uh, the 34 grain charge opened up the pattern just a little bit. It wasn't bad at all. Still a totally acceptable pattern, 50, 60, 70 yards for deer, coyote, hogs, you know, whatever. Uh, a lot of people might actually consider the 34 grain charge's pattern to be better because it's just slightly wider than the uh, 29 grain charge, which was so tight you could cover uh, with the number one buck load, 14 pellets, I had covered with my whole hand and still have a little bit of room left. You'll see that in the video. Uh, the other six pellets were flyers, but not far at all. But anyway, this load right here, I'll just tell it to you because I don't feel like taking it back apart. It was 29 grains of long shot, TPS wad, four pedal, three quarter cut, 32 gauge nitro card, which is this right here. And then about an eighth inch fiber cushion wad on top of that, 16 pellets, 33 cal, 33 caliber double watt buck, mix number 47 buffer. When I went to put the buffer in, that's when I realized my camera had stopped recording. Oh man. That's okay. A little bit more. Yeah, it's still recording. Over shot card again these this is just a three quarter inch bingo chip right on top and roll crimp a little bit more there we go nice looking roll crimp Uh, I actually dimpled the hole out a little bit. If you guys get dimpling on your hole, all you have to do is run it through the final crimp on your press. It'll take care of it. That uh, dimpling out's gone now. I believe this might have been the hole that uh, was too long on me. I mentioned that on camera whenever I was going to fire it. One of those loads, can't remember which one it was, probably this one, might have been a little bit long on me because there ain't much room left to uh, roll crimp that. Um, the TPS wads and double lot duck, you have to get a little bit of filler in the bottom of it with the fiber wads and nitro cards and stuff. Uh, there's just not much room left with the full 16 pellet 2 ounce load to roll crimp, but you can do it. No problem. And uh, you'll see in the video, the pattern quite well. Here's the last load right here. Read off the data. 37 grains, blue dot, TPS, four pedal, three quarter cut, again, 32 gauge nitro card, 18 pellets, 31 cal single lot buck, and buffer. Already primed. Let's uh, get to it. One sec. He gave me 500 grains of blue dot. Enough to load quite a few shells. Again, this is 37 grains. 40. Pretty cool, wasn't very bad out of this. It was actually pretty light. I don't think the velocity is very high on it though. 1150 FPS maybe. 
which is plenty. That's all you need. Um, TPS wad. I already have this one slit. Thirty-two gauge nitro card, which actually fits the bottom of the wad like a glove. It goes right into that cavity. The uh, recess in the bottom of it. We need was this eighteen pellets of single lot buck. Yep. Three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Now again, this one doesn't give you a whole lot of room left left to a uh, roll crimp, but you can totally do it. Let's push that down a little bit. Um, buffer. I never mean for these loading segments to run very long, but they always do. Just a little bit more. That should do it. Nope, gonna need just a... Uh, Hold on. Just a fuzz more. That'll work. Another bingo card. And we can roll it. This one might need to compress the pellets a little bit. I think one of those might have popped up on me. I'm not sure. This might actually compress it anyway. Yeah. A little bit more. Awesome. Yeah, I'd say one of those pellets popped up on me when I roll it, pushed it back down just fine. Again, TPS and full two ounce single lot and double lot buck loads, uh, they don't leave you much hot to, uh, room to roll crimp, I should say. But, there you go. I believe this one patterned like really, really well too. Blue Dot is an awesome powder for buckshot. I need to get me some. Okay, that's gonna wrap up the loading segment. You guys enjoy the range footage. Uh, I'm really proud of these patterns right here. They are very well, as you guys will see. Enjoy. All right, we're doing some pattern tests with the old 835 today. This is a early 90s model. It's my gun. It lives at Josh's house though. Uh, this is a video I've been planning to do for a while. We got a, uh, first load's gonna be 37 grains of blue dot, TPS, four pedal, three quarter cut on the wad, 32 gauge nitro card, 18 pellets of 31 cal, uh, single lot buck, and number 47 buffer, roll crimp on this one. Brand new prime three and a half inch shot hole. Okay, we're at 50 yards for this shot. Felt like that was a good center shot. Well, let's go check it out. Hole looks great. Good solid load. Even the primer's not flattened out. Usually on the 835, it uh, flattens the primers out no matter what we shoot through it. But this one, with blue dot, no problem. Can be reloaded. Well, we finally found something that uh, cannot do my 10 gauge, at least with that load. Um, this pattern right here is probably eight inches. We have a few flyers. Uh, I'm not gonna count them because they're so close together, but I guarantee you we have all 18. The center's right here. And then we have two flyers up here. If you wanna count them, go ahead. All right, we'll start with the flyers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yep. Just right here in this little circle, though, you know, six inch spread. We've got one, two, three, four, five. That's not one. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Just right here in six inches. 
that, from 50 yards. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. I'll show you how far back we were shooting. Let's walk to it. Here's the paddling board. And this is quite a walk. Well, we're walking back this way. The next one we're gonna do, same thing, only difference is it's MG42 wad. It's still 37 grains of blue dot MG42 wad, 18 pellet of single lot, 31 cal, mix number 47 buffer. Mm -hmm. Three and a half inch out of 835. So this will be a test of the wad. Which, which is better, the regular old TPS or the MG42? We'll see, we're going back to 50, or roughly 50. It might be more than 50, it's a pretty long way. Just keep her rolling, right I'll throw this one down and we'll walk back. Here's where I was standing. Yep. All the way back there. It's a lot farther than what it looks like on camera. But it's quite a little walk. Once again, exact same load. Uh, only difference is this one's MG42 wad. It's still 18 pellets of single lot buck with 37 grains blue dot. Mix number 47 buffer, three and a half inch haul. I have a 835. 50 yards, I'm gonna hold dead center on the pattern. Actually, I'm gonna hold top left. Just for the sake of, I don't think we taped the holes on that Yeah, one. we forgot to tape the holes. That's okay. That's all right. I'm going to hold top left. Like there's panels up there. You'll be able to see better when we get there. But... Nice. Oh, How's the haul look? Haul looks great. Recoil ain't bad. It's no worse than a three inch 12 out of anything else. Huh. Don't look bad at all. Blue dot seems to do really well in the 835. Yep. Too bad this blue dot was given to me i ain't got much of it i'll have to find me some next time it's in stock because that seems like it's an awesome buckshot powder all right these two that's higher up were from his shot they belong with this group down here basically the cutoff's right here for it i was holding right in here i pulled it obviously oh well i guess it happened but nonetheless we'll start out we got two flyers up here that's two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen 15, 16, I 17 right here, and you missed that uh, 17 one. 17 and 18. They're all right here. I feel like the TPS wad did a little better than the MG42. It did, but a lot of people might consider that one way too tight. Right. This one here is, you know, the majority of it's right here. It's still, you know, like mm -hmm. 12 inch spread. Now, I'm extremely happy with that pattern, but if I was hunting at 50 yards, I would much prefer that because it is a little bit wider spread and you have a much better chance of actually hitting the deer if you're a little bit off. All right, this one's uh, 29 grains of long shot, TPS wad, four pedals, three quarter cut, um, two 32 gauge nitro cards in the bottom of the wad, 16 pellets of 33 cal, double lot buck, mix number 47 buffer, roll crimp. Once again, 50 yards. 50 yards. Hole's a little bit too long. That's okay. That looks like it has some recoil. More than the blue dot, but still ain't bad. All looks excellent. Primer. Hey, you still see the smoke swirling in that. <sighs> Not no more. Nope. Excellent looking haul. Yes, sir. Another really good group. A uh, few flyers. One, two, three, four. We got four flyers and the rest are out here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All 16 pellets, probably eight, nine inch spread right here. I can cover about every single one of those pellets with my hand. 50 yards, another great load. Alrighty guys, this is getting a little ridiculous at this point, but this has to be every bit of 85 or 90 yards right here. We're pushing 100. Yeah, has to be, but we're gonna try it anyways. This shell here is 29 grains of long shot, TPS wad, four pedal, three quarter cut with 18 pellets of single lot buck, roll crimp. Uh, out of this 835, the Kix GT 680 constriction choke. Yep, also uh, number 47 buffers in that oh, yeah. too. Mixed number 47 buffer, right yep. about that. I think it'll do pretty good. As long as I can do good, it should do good, but we're going to see, ain't we? I heard him hit. Ooh. That was slightly spicy. Uh huh. That's okay, though. The hole looks great. There's no tang or bad wrinkling. Obviously, it was roll crimped. 
Should resize and reload just fine. Uh-huh. Another good load. Well, we'll see. I'll wait till I see the pattern to say that. Alrighty guys, sometimes you get flaming mignon, sometimes you get the hot dog. Today we got the hot dog. But once again, this is from, you know, all the way over there by that pole. It's probably, you know, that pole yard. right here. It's how far away we are. It was 18 pellet. Let's see how many we got here. We got one, two, three. You missed one. Four, five, six. I don't know if I counted that one. I'd recount them. So, all right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, ten. 10, 11. 11. Any more mixed in down through there? So I think 12. Maybe. Looks like we got 11 of 18 on there, which ain't terrible, but it is quite a widespread. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's. I wouldn't shoot that at anything. That was more or less just to see what would happen. Yeah, that, that's a lot longer distance than uh, anyone should Sheepies. shoot buckshot at some, something. Right. Quite cool. a long way away. Okay, this one's got 29 grains, a long shot, X12X gas seal, quarter inch fiber cushion wad, 12 pellets, a quad buck, 38 caliber, and mix number 47 buffer, fold crimp. Okay, this one is conventionally loaded. Uh, 50 yards, might be pushing what this one can do, but my 10 gauge at 40 got a really, really tight pattern with the quad buck, and it was also conventionally loaded. Let's see if the 835 can uh, stack up to it. Did you say quad buck? Yeah, it's quad buck. 12 pellets, two and a quarter ounce load. All looks fine. Primer's not even flattened. Brass looks great, crimp looks great, no issues. Great. All 12 pellets, pretty good group. Had a couple flyers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, right there. Uh, I was aiming right here. Pattern was maybe a few inches low, a little bit right, but that's just me, that's not the gun. Right here, excellent group. 50 yards quad buck out of that gun. It'll get the job done. Alrighty guys, I just want to start off by saying we had signs of overpressure with the load we shot out of this thing. It was 31 grains of long shot. And from what we figured out and what we've read and people said it was just moss bug marks on it. And they swear up and down 34 grains is a, a safe load also. So what we got here today is 34 grains of long shot. TPS with a TPS wad, four, four slits in it, three quarters of the way down, two 32 gauge nitro cards, 18 pellets, 31 cal, single lot buck. Mix number 47 buffer out of this Mossberg 835 at roughly, I don't know, 45, 50 yards. Let's see how it likes this one. That load was a mouthful. That load was a mouthful. It's getting ready to kick the crap out of me too. That didn't look too bad. <laughs> Aha! That one wasn't as sticky as the last one, but... Well, excuse my crude ways of getting it out of the chamber, but yep, that hole don't look as bad as the last one. No, it doesn't. My 20, shoulder don't uh, hurt as bad. Thirty-one grains of long shot gave us even more uh, pressure signs, but you can see the rim right there. It is blowed out just a little bit. It's not separating like that one was. If you guys want to see that, I posted it on Facebook in the reloading group, Buck and Slug Reloaders. Just go there, search for it. You'll see it. Uh, the primer pocket right here, well, the firing pin hole, it is dimpled out. Apparently that is due to the large firing pin hole in the 835. We, this has happened even on factory loads. Um, crimp looks great. Brass, not so much, but we'll stick to 29 grains. It's given us great results. Alrighty guys, everybody knows lead shot don't like to be pushed, you know, at high velocities and that load was up there. You know, it was once again, it was 34 grains of long shot, you know. 50 yards we've got out of the 18 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 is up here 16 and 17 you, yeah 17 is the 18 it's all over the board though at 50 yards one of them probably went off to the side over here because that pellet right there right comparing to the basically the same load just back down to 29 grains of long shot where it's literally the size of the side of my hand there mm -hmm. the tape. I, I feel like it 
it can be done, but it probably shouldn't. Not out of the 835 anyway. Uh, now, yeah, like he said, the 34 grains did blow the pattern out just a little bit, but it's still a good pattern. If you have a different gun, then by all means run the 34 grain Kicks chart. GT is made to strip the wads. So as they come out, if you look, it chews them up into a star. Uh -huh. That's how you could tell which ones were shot out of the 835. Okay, this one's got uh, 29 grains of long shot, TPS wad, three quarter cut, um, one eighth inch fiber cushion wad in the uh, bottom of the wad, 20 pellets of number one buck, and uh, mix number 47 buffer, folds crimp on this one. 50 yards. 50 yards, yep. My earplugs wasn't any good. <laughs> Slight ringing sensation. All looks great. No issues with that one. 29 grains is the way to go. Another really awesome pattern. 50 yards. This was number one buck. 20 pellets of it. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20. All 20 pellets. And probably 14 inch spread from here to here. That one's a flyer though. But look at this center group right here. My entire hand covers it. Another awesome 50 yard load. Uh, again, some people might consider that one too tight. But if you're like me, that's an amazing pattern. Well, the 835 did really well with the buckshot. Uh, a lot better than expected. I expected it to anyway, but let's be honest. We, we all know the 835 is going to like buckshot. Um, got some really, really nice patterns out of it. Really happy with them. Uh, well, that, that's about it, though. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.